What's up guys, Stardust Studio here, today I'm gonna do my ban list prediction. Keep in mind this is a prediction, not a wish list. We just got dual overload, so now we can make safe assumptions of what cooldown will hit and will not hit. Now of course these are just assumptions, my predictions, I have no con inside contact with Konami. Would be cool to have, but I don't. So I'm just making estimates based on how much I know of Konami. So starting off we have 9 cards that will get banned, 7 cards will get limited, 4 cards that get semi-limited, and 2 cards that get unlimited. Once again these are my predictions, I expect a somewhat heavy but not too heavy ban list considering we're going into a new master rule. So with that said, let's get going. So first off, we have Spiral Master Plan, as banned. I mean, uh, is there any argument against this? Currently Spiral is just too oppressive of a deck. Um, they obviously want to keep selling Spirals, uh, sorry, Magician's Souls. I almost called it Spiral Souls by accident. And this card is the issue in combination with Souls. So if they hit Master Plan, then Souls is less of an issue in Spiral and they lose their huge performance boost. Um, are Spiral still an issue outside of that? No, I don't really think so, so that's why I think banning Spiral Master Plan might be the right move, and I'd expect Konami to agree with that. Next up we have Luna Light, Light, Luna Light Tiger. I mean, Luna Lights right now are just being stupid for no reason. And honestly, Tiger is a big part of the issue. Its skill effect should have been a hard ones per turn, but it isn't, hence me saying, hey, let's ban it. Limiting it will not do anything, as you can easily search it, I mean it's a beast wire, tanky says hi, so... I could see a decision from Konami being made like, yeah, we don't want this wall lunar light thing to be too good, so we're hitting Tiger. Next up is Droll and Lockbird, I mean, if anything has been shown to me recently, it's that... Cards like Droll and Nibiru and Maxi that just auto win you the game if you drop it at the right moment against the right deck. They're just not fair, like they're inherently bad card design and I don't think Konami disagrees. I mean it would have been easy money as a reprint, it's quite an expensive card at the moment, so if they plan to keep it in the game, the logical move would have been to reprint it. Since it's not getting reprinted, it's busted, it's literally killing so many decks. I think banning Droll is the right move. Next up we have Dimensional Barrier. Now yeah, this might come out of nowhere, but honestly, Dimensional Barrier was probably designed to push Lake Monsters. That's the only logical reasoning I can think of behind the creation of Dimensional Barrier. And now we're entering Master Rule 5 and this card is still a thing. They half reprinted it in Dual Devastator but not in Overload. Which to be honest would have been too many reprints maybe. But anyways my point stands it's just two busts in a game that actually uses those summoning methods. In context of Master Rule 4 this card's existence somewhat makes sense but Master Rule Fight's card will be way too broken. Konami will be making a big mistake if they do not address Dimensional Barrier. So next up we have to look at extra deck cards and the first card I want to look at is Ultimate Solkin. So the big thing with Solkin is that it was a very high price point and random shit like Gale's Colors got reprinted. So if that random shit gets reprinted, something like this would definitely have been reprinted if it's expensive. But that's the thing, I don't think they want Ultimate Solkin in the game anymore with the new Master Rule change. It's just simply way too abusable. So I could definitely see them hit uh, Ultimate Zolkin by banning it, because it's just too abusable with the new Master Rule change. Next up we have TG Hype Librarian. Now I don't think this is needed, but Konami we're talking about, they are prone to overdo things at times, and they might just hit Hype Librarian, ban it, make sure Synchro decks don't really get to play. Wouldn't surprise me for Konami in one bit, I mean Synchros usually tend to be terrible in Yu-Gi-Oh, so... When I finally get Needle Fiber, I could see definitely, definitely see them hitting Hyper Barry. Next up, um, I think they will ban Materia Beast. I mean, this card is insanely broken, like... Arguably the strongest Synchro in the game. I mean... Basically, as long as you control this card, your opponent cannot activate any spell cards. Like, this card is not once per turn. Yeah, but it requires very specific materials. Yeah, except Glow Bulb exists with Needle Fiber now, that's... I think. So yeah, Naturia Beast is insanely broken and I can't imagine Konami keeping it around for much longer. So next up we have Curious. I mean, this card is just prone to be a problem somehow, some way. I mean, basically being able to send any card from the deck to the grave without any level restriction on it is going to be a problem at some point. It's been shown by the Cherubini Turbo deck already, for example. 
Curious is going to be way too good for its own good. And finally, card I want to get banned is Striker Dragon. I mean, it adds Boot Sector Launch from to your deck, from your deck to your hand for free, and that's insane. That's absolutely insane. Then its other effect also exists, where you can target all face monster control and one rocket monster in your grave, destroy the monster from the field, and add the monster from the grave to the hand. Like having both these effects on one generic link for link one, I mean, I can't imagine this card being legal for much longer. I mean, we've already seen the issues it can bring to the game. I don't think that's something that will stop. There's no restrictions anywhere, so yeah. Nice. Let's talk about limited cards, shall we? So first off, we have Alliance of the Invoker. I don't think Konami wants it um, invoked to be this good again. Um, I mean, obviously they want Shadow to be good again. I mean, they gave them an entire structure deck for some odd reason. Um, with Invoked, they became one of the top contenders, and I can't imagine Konami being too happy about Invoked still being relevant. Um, one easy way to hit them is to just hit Alistair, hit it to one. That way, um, it becomes easier to play around Invoked, it becomes easier to disrupt them, and the engine is less safe than it is at the moment. Next up is Instant Fusion, I mean Instant Fusion. Instant Fusion was kind of fine in Master Rule 4, already quite a strong card. But with cards like Cross Sheep with Master Rule 5, um, the wall you don't um, need to summon monsters in extra monster zone anymore. Instant Fusion is gonna be broken, like legit broken broken. The things it can do with Millennium's Ice Restrict for example, Tower's Ice Restrict, there's so many usage for this card that are absurd that I don't I can't imagine being legal for much longer. So next up we have Mind Control. I mean, Mind Control is seen play in so many decks right now. They're already semi-limited. I could imagine them being like, yeah, this card is still too good. It's still seeing too much play. Let's limit it. Because as you've seen last, ban list, Konami does not like generic cards. And this is a very generic card that sees a lot of play. It doesn't necessarily make them money. So Hitting Mind Control would be a logistical move in that aspect. So next up we have Will of the Southern Mangrate, I mean... Southern Mangrate are still the top deck despite any hits they've taken. So you can imagine the hits that just keep coming and... One of the somewhat logical moves would be to limit Will of the Southern Mangrate. Multiples, this card is kinda ridiculous, at one it's probably fine. So you know, this would make sense to touch the deck a little bit, make them a bit more fair. Next up we have Mystic Mine, I mean... What a broken card. How, how has Konami kept it legal for this long? Now, as much as I would like to say ban it, it's more of a Konami move to somehow keep Floodgates at 1. So, Spell Mining, uh, Cave, aka Mystic Mine, I could definitely see joining that fit, that path. Um, the next card I can see getting limited is Personal Spoofing. I mean, obviously, Alt Guess overperforming. They're also just like Solomon Great doing way too well at the moment. You can imagine Konami being like, yeah, we need to hit the deck a little bit and personal spoofing to one. Would hit them with a would hit them a bit because it's unsearchable, so it's going to one is actually relevant in the deck. Um, and the final limit I could see happen is totally awesome. I mean, once you rack up multiple Bahamut Shards, you can just keep spamming totally awesome. But is the Bahamut Shark the issue then? No, it isn't. Bahamut Shark is totally fine. It summons an exceed without materials. So, any exceed that's good without materials is the issue, not the Bahamut Shark. Oh yeah, wait, that makes sense. So yeah, totally awesome tier 1. That way you can still use Bahamut Shark to set up one Q at the gate, but that's it. Anyways, up to the semi limits. So the first card I could see, I could see going to 1, 2, sorry. The next card I could see going to 2, no. The first card I should... The first card I could see go to 2 is Trio King Lito Saki in the Disaster. Well, I don't even know how to pronounce the name, but you get the card I mean. The card is used in Dinosaurs a lot. I can see them wanting to push Dinosaurs, and one way to do that is to push this card to 2. I mean, they keep giving Dinosaurs support, they just gave them reprints, they're obviously making a lot of cash on Dinos, and they want to keep doing that. This card would be a great way to push Dinos even more. Next up is Destiny Hero Malicious to 2, I mean, new Master Rule change coming up, this card's gonna be way, way, way too good for its own good. And Heroes kinda are done being printed anyway, so why keep this around, right? 
After that, we have Pantheism of the Monarchs. Bit random, but they have to move some cards up. They usually do it every list, and Pantheism would do nothing at two, which is why I could see it happen. It's just one of those random moving up things that Konami likes to do. After that, we have Pot of Everest. I mean, it went to one, does nothing, goes to two, does nothing, goes to three, probably does nothing either. But Konami is usually very cautious, unless... Yeah, there are some exceptions, but usually they're cautious, so I think Pot of Everest going to two would make sense. Finally, we have the Unlimited, so first of two guides from the Underworld. I mean, it's go going to 3 won't suddenly make this card more broken, it will make BA a little bit better, it will make other decks a little bit better. But it will not break anything. I mean, we've advanced to a gate, st game state where I can easily negate it anyway, I mean, Ash, Permanence, Feiler, you named so many ways to play around this card. It's not as... It's not as unfair as it was when it first got released. Let's just put it like that. Finally, we have Deep Sea Diva. I mean, yeah, what can I say? <laughs> Deep Sea Diva. Um, yeah, so this would sound like a bad move, but Konami likes to push their product. One way to make people buy the new Deep Sea support is to bring up Diva to 3. It would be a very Konami move to make, a bad move, but a very Konami move. Anyways, these are my predictions, not my wish list. This is what I expect Konami to do. Well, if that happened, we'll see in a few weeks. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys next time. Start your video signing out.